Hello, my name is Sig. This is Essential Crochet and you are always welcomed here. Today, we are knee deep in autumn leaves and cool, crisp weather. And because of that, I thought it would be fun to do this folder kit. I want to call it, oh, well, it's not quite retro. It's certainly not vintage, but it is about 20 years past its date. I like this particular scarecrow because it's very Halloween-y to me. He's a little creepy and that works for me just fine. But it's put out by Crochet World Publication. So even though Mary Maxim was the one who sold this, it is put out by the Crochet World Publication. And I thought it would be fun to do up in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments box below. Always hit that subscribe bar. And of course, we love it when you hit the like button. With all that said, let's just go ahead and get started. So first it tells me that I need to have one and a half ounces of white and of carrot. So I have 1.41-ish. All right, well, you know, that's... That is what it is. If I need more white, white is easy enough to, to dig up. And it's Red Heart Super Saver, so that should be easy to, to find and replace. Next, I'm going to weigh out the carrot. And it looks like we got plenty of carrot, 1.96 ounces. So that's good. Next, it's going to tell me that I need at least an ounce of a couple of different colors. So I need an ounce of the medium time. And we clearly have that. And then I need an ounce of warm brown. And we clearly have that. I need an ounce of what they call cornmeal. And yes, I clearly have that, 1.65. And they don't give me any ounces for the black. They just say that I need two yards. And I'm pretty certain there's two yards in there, just looking at it like this. And then I have one more. So they tell me I should have... How much? No. They say I should have five ounces of the multicolor. That doesn't look right. So, well... So that they tell me I should have five ounces. I clearly have 2.11. So either the kit, but the kit was sealed. So I don't know what that's all about. See, it's all a mystery, right? It's, it's a mystery. We'll just have to find out how this works up. And if for some reason I don't have enough of this, that's where the, that's where we improvise, right? And so we'll just play this by ear and see how it goes. So next thing they tell me that they've supplied is 14 millimeter burgundy heart shaped shank button and two 15 millimeter black shank buttons. So that's what I have here. Let me set that aside. Now, I didn't get anything else in the kit, but what I'm going to need is I'm going to need the fiber fill. It tells me I need to have a hook to obtain my gauge. And then I am going to supply my tapestry needle, my stitch markers, and then it says something about a 7 inch diameter fall foliage ring. I don't know what that's about. I'm not really sure what that has to do with this project. So I clearly don't have one of those, but we'll move forward and see what happens. If I have to have one, or it looks like the project really needs one, then I'll make a trip down to Michael's or Joanne's. Otherwise, we'll just play that one by ear. So the first thing I did is to rewind all the yarn that came into this kit into nice functional cakes. Next, I'm going to move on to beginning the pattern and I'm going to walk you through the pattern a little bit as I do it. So we're going to begin with the white and the instructions tell me that I need to start working from the top down. 
And the instructions tell me to chain two and then place my six single crochets in the second chain from the hook. But I'm just going to go ahead and make an adjustable ring because I like that better. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my six single crochets. Three, four, five, and six. I'm going to tighten my ring. And I am working an under yarn technique. So now when this particular pattern came out, these projects were mostly being done with an over the hook or over yarn technique. I'm going to use an under yarn technique because this is an amigurumi. And so my next round is going to consist of 12 stitches or 12 single crochets rather. Or to be more precise, six increases. And then as you might suspect, round three is going to have you do a single crochet and then an increase in order to end with a count of 18 for round three. And then as would be typical, round four would want you to have 24 stitches at the end of its completion. Now for round five, going to deviate a little bit from a standard pattern that you might be familiar with and I'm going to end round five with a total count of 28 so I think that's kind of interesting see how it alters the shape or begins to alter the shape for the head of this piece and then for round six we're going to end with a total count of 32 so we're still deviating from what might be a normal or a recognizable formula for most of us. Next, for the next seven rounds, I'm simply going to single crochet. And then after that, you're going to start your decreasing, but you're only going to decrease one round before you start filling the head. And then after that, for the next round, you're basically going to decrease again until you're, or rather not until you are, but you will be left with a count of 12 single crochets after that decrease.
And in true Mary Maxim fashion, I have plenty of yarn left over. Mary Maxim is really good, or at least it's been my experience, that they are really good about making sure that you have ample yarn for any of the kits you receive from them. In fact, I had so much yarn left over in this kit, I was able to make a second scarecrow. And with the making of the second scarecrow, I used right down to the very last inch of white yarn, which was okay because it worked out perfectly. Uh, the multicolored yarn, I was definitely playing some yarn chicken, but as you can see, there was still some of that left over. I was a little concerned about the carrot colorway, but I have even more of this left over than the multicolored yarn. And then, of course, as you can see, there was ample yarn left over from everything else. The cornmeal, the, the, what they called medium brown, uh, this green color. I don't remember what they called the green color. And then, of course, the black colorway. So, yeah, that was, that was nice and that was unexpected. Before we continue on, I just wanted to say, because I forgot to say it earlier, that the designer of this scarecrow, is a woman by the name of Sheila Leslie. And then also, too, I finally figured out what they meant when they were talking a foliage ring. They go on to explain it a little further at the very end of the pattern instructions. And basically, it's this sort of ring of, of leaves here, of fall leaves, that are worked up in a kind of a ring. And the scarecrow is placed into this ring as kind of an addition to a sort of fall style wreath, if you will. So that wasn't a big deal. I don't need the ring because I'm not worried about making a wreath. But that is a cute idea. If you are skilled or would just like to have a more Halloween kind of wreath, a scarecrow similar to this place in the center of one of those types of wreaths that you can purchase or that you can even make with supplies purchased from your standard hobby store is gonna work out beautifully, I think. So before I show you the end product, I am gonna warn you, I did make a couple of changes. That's me, it's not the designer. Her pattern was perfect, it was easy to follow, there were no misunderstandings, it was beautifully written, all those good things. And I pretty much followed the pattern right down to the final little details and it's the little details i changed just a smidge and i will explain why as i go along in the kit they gave us two buttons well three buttons actually but two black round flat buttons and a heart shaped button that were to act as the eyes and the no nose of the scarecrow now because I decided to make two scarecrows because there was enough yarn to do so. I opted not to use these buttons. I'll put them away and use them in another project at another time. But with the two scarecrows that I had, I wanted them to be similar. So I wanted them to have the same kind of eyes. I wanted them to have some of the same kind of finishing touches so that they could work more easily together and be visually cohesive, if you will. Now, this is the scarecrow I ended up with. So, if you were to compare this with the actual image of the scarecrow from the pattern, you would notice that really the only difference here from that pattern and what I made was I added a little pumpkin button to the bibs of his overalls. I made eyes from regular buttons, four hole buttons. And you can see I opted to put no mouth or no nose. And then I added an additional patch to, to his hat. So this works better for me. It matches my taste and better. And it crosses over the look at any rate to the second scarecrow that I decided to make. Now you can see it shares the same little pumpkin button that I put on her bib. And then instead of a hat, I just made a quick, simple little flower to go on her head. She has the same eyes. Uh, the difference is right here where you can see 
the fringe of the straw on the feet and the wrists, I placed a little bit around her neck. Now, with regards to that, she is made exactly the same way as he is, with exception mostly to the skirt. So I made a skirt. I improvised with the yarn that was available in order to make it last. So I was afraid that if I made the legs orange from this carrot colorway, that I wouldn't have enough of the yarn to make the dress. And I'm pretty sure that's true. And besides, I like the white gives it kind of a white leggings kind of a look anyways. So this is what the backs look like. And I am really particularly happy with the way this turned out. You never really know how these things are going to work out in the end. But this was a fantastic kit. That's one of the things I really like about some of these older kits is they're very detail oriented. So yes, it takes a little more patience but the finishing touches are so much nicer. So while the little plushies that you can make are super cute and everybody likes those, they're really just very simple. And if you want something that's a little more detail oriented, a little more interesting to look at, but you're not really sure where to start or what to do or even how to implement small changes to your everyday pieces, these older kits are a fantastic way to do that. They give you a chance to try out some techniques you may not be familiar with and then to also approach your pieces a little differently than what seems to be trending or popular in today's crochet amigurumi genre. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. But until then, stay safe, stay amazing, and continue to be your wonderful creative selves. Bye-bye now.